Ethereum Towers hosted their second AMA on the 29th of November and in this video I'll be going over some key notes and feedback from that session. Welcome back to LimeTube and if you enjoy my videos please leave a like, comment and subscribe as it really motivates me to create more content for you. It's also free to subscribe and it helps me massively. I'm currently on OpenSea to show you the floor price of Ethereum Towers. However, OpenSea are having issues and unfortunately we can't see the floor price. However, the last time I checked, it was around 0.34 or 0.35 Ethereum. Now to mention, there is a video of the whole AMA on YouTube and I'll share a link in the description below if you want to review that instead. They also provided this too long didn't read document to summarize everything they went over in the AMA. However, this TLDR needs a TLDR in itself because it is eight pages long. So I went through the document and highlighted some key updates to share with you guys in hopefully a shorter form. First of all, they had an opening. I'm going to skip through that and introductions. Um, for those of you who don't know Jason, he is known as Ethereum Towers in the Discord. For a long time, I thought the Ethereum Towers Discord member was a shared Discord between all the team members, but actually it is Jason. There's also Only Rares, which is Brandon, and Dad Cypher, who is Shane. Moving on to the company and team, they are now officially incorporated as Ethereum Worlds LLC. Notice it's Ethereum Worlds and not Ethereum Towers. That's because they are thinking long term and everything that Ethereum Towers can be and more. They've also trademarked their logo and established the necessary business accounts to be a company. So they've mentioned they're essentially working to transform this little known project into a professionally run enterprise setting ourselves up for long-term success in this space. We, we're starting to see more and more of these NFT projects become companies, and I think this is the right strategy to take. It helps make the project feel more genuine, and it also provides assurance for the communities. Moving on to team updates. So the project is moving fast, and was Shane, Brandon, and Jason committed to other aspects of the project that doesn't leave much space to adequately provide the support our team and community deserves. This is where we introduce a new member of the team who is Emma, our friend from down under. Some of you may know her as Mo. She is very active, genuine and friendly in the Discord. So those of you who don't know her will get to know her. Some of her responsibilities include community engagement, event management, community support initiatives, staff support and wellbeing, and a whole host of other activities and events. A lot of her roles and responsibilities are mainly around the community and providing value to the community and keeping them updated and informed and making it a fun place to be. So congratulations, Emma, on the promotion. Unfortunately, Emma couldn't attend the AMA. However, Shane did go over an extract that Emma wrote, and he did it in a great Aussie accent. Props to Shane, or should I say, Shema for that. Now, I'm not going to read through this all because I wouldn't do it any justice in comparison to how Emma would have read it out, or in fact, how Shane did read it out. But this little bit that I've highlighted here, I thought was very eloquent, but the whole statement itself is very eloquent. So if you do have five minutes, please take a read through this. Here it says, each time we participate in a live event or submit an entry into a contest, we are adding depth and layers to our community experiences. This reiterates the point that everything that the community does plays a part in developing the community and making it a great and fun place to be. I really enjoy hanging out in the lobby and chatting with people. You meet all different kinds of people from different experiences, learn about new projects, and it really is an awesome place to be. Moving on to the current landscape of the project one is mainly a free to mint project right now and it is about 65 to 75 percent filled and there is around 25 official collaboration partners and a number of new collabs in the works each collaboration has provided value in its own way so the team are grateful for that they've also implemented early investor initiatives which i've created a separate video about so feel free to look back at that for more information these early investor initiatives will provide some funds that will be used primarily for the production plans or even pre-production plans, which is discussed below. The metaverse. After doing a lot of research, there was no metaverse ideal for 
the size of the project. The poly count and height restrictions were always going to be an issue, which led them to the decision of creating their own metaverse for this metaverse, they met with eight different gaming studios and engaged in discussions with them. Their hiring criteria was previous blockchain experience, previous clients, project ideas, responsiveness and reviews and testimonials. They actually signed the contract with their chosen development studio yesterday. We should know details as soon as they can announce it. This studio will be developing the pre-production phase and key deliverables for that are the gaming design document, which is a industry standard document, technical architecture document, blockchain web free wallet integration analysis, 3D environmental models of standard and luxury apartments to provide some context before we officially launch this project and user interface sketches of major screens. This pre-production phase will help provide a definitive timeline and budget for the MVP product. With regards to the occupancy map, they signed the first contract with a bespoke software development vendor to start production for the Ethereum Towers occupancy map. So why are they building this? As a first step, they want stakeholders to be able to visually see their apartments within the towers. The inspiration behind this was it instills a sense of pride and ownership, being able to see your stake of land within their ecosystem, which I entirely agree with. What are the challenges for the team? They need to build a 3D interactive map that allows users to navigate and cycle through each floor. A 2D map clearly wouldn't work. What can we expect from this? From a basic level, we would be able to search and visually see our floors. And when the 3D format arrives, we'll be able to click on individual apartments and see information about that apartment. The map may also include filters that would allow users to see which apartments were for sale, which have been claimed and which were unminted, which will be useful to scope out any particular apartments. The timeline for this is six weeks development for the MVP. With regards to the smart contract, their previous developer could not facilitate everything towards the end and had to separate ways. And from this, they decided they need specialised vendors to be working with, mainly for the following three reasons. Experience in similar applications and functions, took security, testing and stabilisation very seriously and could be held accountable for their work. So they're currently at contract stage with a vendor who is a true blockchain expert covering services such as smart contract, DeFi development, fintech solutions, token development, governance, and blockchain automation, and more. And this vendor will be spending about 400 hours developing contracts for Tower 1 and Tower 2. The vendors worked with major brands such as DHL, Volvo, and Kutura. With regards to the architecture, they've hired a professional firm to help conceptualise and design Ethereum Towers and they have released some initial drawings with the buildings looking like DNA strands and there's a specific reason for that. It is to highlight that the community is the DNA of Ethereum Towers. If you haven't seen the design, this is exactly how it looks. It's got a Helix inspired design, which is the DNA blueprint. Moving on to brand activation and marketing. So what has been done so far? Right now, the collaborations and partnerships have really helped the Ethereum Towers group grow naturally, which meant they haven't had to really spend on marketing. They did do one paid promotion with BitBoy back in October, and it did bring up the sales at the time. Why haven't they done more? One of the views are they really only have one shot at marketing and marketing it correctly. So when they do launch marketing campaigns, they want it to really gain traction and capture attention in the space. So they want to have a lot of documents and information readily available, such as the floor plans, the render, the light paper and have pre-production started. So they have researched different ways and methods of their marketing and they've also looked at future collaboration partners and current collaboration partners trying to get more spots for pre-sale or whitelist for Tower 2 and that's something they're definitely considering and looking into.
Moving on to tokenomics, the bit I'm most excited about. They're currently exploring the economic model for the token and making some good progress. The smart contract vendor specializes in DeFi and token development, so they will be able to expertly advise on the strategies to take. They believe the vendor is a great fit for support in the token development and its utility as they have a wealth of experience from the smart contract project. It's clear they take security, testing and stabilization very seriously. The first step is to work with our development network to determine the economic model of the token, its supply, its distribution and its life cycle. Then it would be finalizing the utility within the digital environment. The major consideration here is the token distribution as they have plans on expanding out into a world rather than just the towers. They need to bear that in mind and I guess have some allocation for the token in the future. They are also looking at the resident and programs which was previously known as the resident reward scheme and how to distribute the tokens. Collaborations. As mentioned there's been about 25 collaborations so far and the last count there has been over 70 plus groups that have reached out for potential space in the towers. They don't have room for all 70 collaborations in the Tower 1, so they have officially started looking at spots for Tower 2. They're looking at a bunch of ways to add value to owning apartments in Towers, so apartment owners, luxury apartment owners, will start to notice the early access whitelist spots for upcoming drops. Roadmap version 2, so they have released a new version of the roadmap. I may create a separate video on this, so let me know if that's something you'd like to see or not. As the project grew and evolved, so did the roadmap. Here is how the new roadmap looks. Moving on to charity contributions. For those of you who don't know, they're working with anatomical NFTs run by Melissa and Ryan. They are having weekly auctions of one of their NFTs and if you win that auction you will also get an Ethereum Towers whitelist spot. Through this they have donated over $5,200 to Children's Wisconsin Healthcare Systems dedicated solely to the health and well-being of children. The latest NFT as part of this auction was this Lung 57. It sold for 0.3357 Ethereum that is the price for this and also included is the Ethereum Tower spot and all that money I believe is donated to charity minus the gas fees. So it's a great great cause you're donating to charity and you're getting two NFTs as well. Yesterday they also announced a Zeneca collaboration and also upcoming is a website and light paper and there is a Dapper Dinos Alpha Mind show on Wednesday. There was a DJ event straight after that AMA, however, I was a bit busy, so I was unable to attend. Talking of their website, I did try to search for the website and came across this page. So it looks like ISM works and they have registered the domain and are clearly preparing the website. Sorry to the team if you haven't shared that information yet. Moving on to the final part, the Q&A from the audience. What will the mint price for Tower 2 be and when do you expect to open from minting? So minting is targeted for mid-January for Tower 2 and price won't be revealed until January because they want to strike the right balance between supply and demand and floor price and also take into consideration the price of ethereum i'm more interested in understanding how they will be releasing tower 2 whether it be floor by floor right now they've done a great job at keeping the floor price of apartments high and one of my concerns were as there's more and more apartments made available will the floor price start to drop but so far they're doing a great job at keeping it high. What is the major benefit of buying tower 1 versus tower 2? Nothing really, they're both towers are identical in all aspects that count. I believe previously the reward structure was only for tower 1, I'm guessing they're planning to have it for both tower 1 and tower 2. Now that it's no longer two towers and it's an Ethereum world, what are the plans for this world? There was a very vague answer here where we're looking to expand Ethereum worlds versus Ethereum resorts. This leaves things a lot more open-ended to what we are going to be doing next. How is Ethereum Towers creating revenue? Currently, secondary sales where they receive 7.5% of each sale, which I believe some of this will be distributed as part of token distribution to apartment owners in the future. And more recently, the early investor initiatives, they will be taking 97.5% funds 
generated through that, OpenSea take the remaining 2.5%. And when Tower 2 is launched, the minting from that will provide the bulk of the revenue for the production goals. Are you planning any brand integration into the ET metaverse? This is certainly something we would love to incorporate into our project and something we are planning for. Is there a rough plan for when Tower 1 will be filled? Yes, our goal is to have Tower 1 at capacity by end of December, but they may reserve some apartments for promotions and collaborations. And that brings us to the end of the AMA. Hopefully once I edit this, it'll be short and concise and provide you with enough information. And as I've mentioned, I'll provide a link to the YouTube for the full AMA as well in the description below. What are your thoughts on the latest updates from Ethereum Towers? Leave some notes in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.